Hi there, let's take a look at this example for a, a linear regression analysis having the uh, food spending to be Y and then having the income to be X, meaning that your spending on food is affected by the income, uh, your income. All right, so now what we do is basically we take the, uh, 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 if you want, you can take a look at uh, the relationship between these two together just visually you can have the um, a nice let me just add here more uh, space so that I can uh, show the maybe I need more space okay all right let's put it here nicely so this would be the income as you can see here and this would be the food spending and as you can see uh, that this would be the uh, simple linear regression. This is the linear line, and this is the equation, and this is the R. A little bit. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about the cone-like shape of the uh, data points. As you can see here, if you take a look, uh, you can see that the, the 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 values here, the residuals, increases as uh, the uh, independent variable increases, or also the residuals increases as the dependent variable increases. So let's take a look first, and we'll see if there is heteroscedasticity or not. All right. So first uh, thing first is to uh, not solver, not solver, is to get the regression results. So I'm gonna go and get the regression results as you can see over here. I'm gonna hit OK. And then I'm going to get the input, the Y input, as you can see, guys, here. And then I'm going to hit on the labels. I'm going to get the X. And the X is the income. And then I'm going to hit OK. I want the residuals. And I don't want it in a new sheet. Let's take it and put it over here in the same sheet. And let's hit OK. And now we get the results. Now, first of all, let's take a look, investigate the adjusted R square. The adjusted R square is good. This guy is also good. It's less than or equal 0.05, meaning that all variables in the, uh, which is the income, is useful in uh, predicting the food spending. This means that income uh, explains 64.5% of the total variance. And over here, we just don't look at the intercept, but we rather look at the coefficient here and the significant value. That's cool. And now, uh, you can take these residuals, uh, back them a little bit here, and uh, start with the absolute residuals. You know now my style. I like to add the absolute residuals first. So I'm going to do the ABS for the absolute residuals, and I get that here. And once I get it, I can uh, find out uh, if there is any outliers that we can get rid of. But for now, we are not concerned with the outliers, but with heteroscedasticity per se. But let's just make sure that everything is all right. If the absolute value here is less than or equal uh, this value, and we are going to the two standard errors, we are going to fix them, then give me one else, it's an outlier, and I'm gonna give it a zero, because it's outlier, it's O, it starts with an O, and O is looks like a zero. We have only one outlier. So I am sure that uh, we have about 95% uh, uh, or more of the, uh, here. This is the sum of all the values in within two standard errors over the total number of observations. We have 98% of values. Uh, we have here two standard errors. Now let's take a, look, a closer look at the outlier. Is the outlier too big? Is it like influential outlier? Let's take a look. So we're going to take all these together and make them nice. Get rid of the so we have here, this is not an outlier, and it's four digits. This four digits are not an outlier. So we can say here is this outlier, this is also four digits, but let's take a look. Rather, let's take a look. It might be an influential outlier. How are we going to take a look? First of all, let's take a look visually. Visually, I can't see like a very popped out point away from the crowd. I can't. I can't see a very distant point either on the far up or far down that is distant from the crowd. So I'm gonna just say and assume that this is not an influential outlier and I'm just gonna let it survive because I don't even have problems here with the significance of the independent variable.
Now, let's take a look at the skewness and the kurtosis. Let's take a look at the normality assumption of the error term. With the normality assumption, we are actually looking at the skewness. So we're going to take a look at the skew, and the skew we take, we feed into that the residuals. And then let's take a look at the kurtosis, and with the kurtosis, we're also feeding in there the residuals. And now we can see the skewness and the kurtosis for a 56 uh, sample size. Uh, we need that. We need that uh, magical uh, um, table that we have right there. So let's let me pull out this table and throw it in here. Throw it. Place it. Place it in here. So uh, right now we have 0 0.1, and where is the, we have 56, so we have about uh, 50 and 60. So let's take a look at the skewness. The skewness is in between 0 0.6 to 0 0.62, negative positive. So we are good to go. How about the kurtosis? Kurtosis is between 0 0.9, negative to it. It's also the kurtosis, the skewness, and the kurtosis, as you can see, guys, are in within a limit. So we, uh, uh, or the model, uh, satisfies the normality assumption uh, of the error terms or of the residuals. Second assumption is the homoskedasticity assumption or the heteroskedasticity check. We'd like to do that with a visual first. So I'm going to visualize these two guys together, which are the dependent variable and the uh, absolute errors. Uh, I don't like the this being here, so I'm going to just put it over here. All right, let's take a look. I don't like the look of it, but who knows? Let's take a look. Even if I put the trend line, that the not necessarily a definitive indication. Uh, the most definitive indication would be the Prussian Pagan test. So, but the R square is very high, as you can see here. So let's take a look at the Prussian. It looks like there is a, a a very good linear model here. So let's take a look at the Prussian Pagan test. All right, all right. Uh, uh. With the Prussian Pagan test, what we need to do is we need to obtain the squared, the squared residuals, right, guys? So we're going to just take this residual, multiply it by itself, so that we can uh, perform the Prussian Pagan test. With the Prussian Pagan test, basically, what we need to do is we need to go to data go to data analysis regression okay and then for the y we're going to take these guys which are the squared uh, uh, values and then we're going to take the uh, income right so we're going to take the income we don't need residuals right and over here we are going to place the output just below the label of the push and vegan test what happened now the y what's wrong with the y yeah we forgot the label this is what's wrong with the y. Okay, now we have the output. The output is maybe too close. Let's put it here. All right. So first of all is the chi square uh, statistic, and the chi square statistic is nothing but sorry, sorry. The chi square statistic is nothing but the r square multiplied by the uh, uh, number of observations. And then we need the p-value of this test. So the p-value of this test will be as follows. Uh, what is the p-value? Um, 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 um. uh, chi squared distribution RT. We're going to feed in this. And we have only one as the degrees of freedom. And this is all saying that this is less than 0 0.05, meaning that there is or the model suffers, uh, uh, there is heteroskedasticity, or the model suffers, fr suffers from uh, heteroskedasticity problem. Now, when the model suffers from heteroskedasticity, what do you do? Or, when the model suffers from, the normality assumption is lacking for both. When the normality assumption is not met, or when there is heteroskedasticity 
what do you do? You do the following. You are going to do what we call it the, uh, this is the data. We are going to call it the transformation of the variables. Which variable? Usually the dependent variable. So we're going to take this data again and we're going to do the transformation. So this is, we're going to do data, the transformation so that we can hopefully, hopefully hoping to overcome and attempt to overcome the um, heteroscedasticity or the normality assumption. So in case of violation of the normality assumption or violation of heteroscedasticity, what do you do? Basically, you need to transform. So we are going to do here why it transformed, okay? Y transformed will take the same here for the spending. And we are going to transform it, transform it to either uh, the lin. Do I have anything here? Yes. So, uh, non-normality of the residual in, in, in invalidates the p-values. We know that. Same as for homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity. And assumption not met that you use to determine significance of independent variables or the entire regression. The most common solution to the problem of non-normal ra random variables is to transform the dependent variable, often replacing y by the natural logarithm of y, the square root of y, or the inverse of y. This is not only a problem for the normality assumption invalidation, but also in terms of the invalidation of heteroscedasticity. So if you are also not meeting the heteroscedasticity assumption, which is the uh, heteroscedasticity a check, if you didn't pass the heteroscedasticity check, with this, which is the non-constant variance of the error term, what you need to do is also you need to do a transformation. So for example, if you take this example that we are working with, the income and the food spending, you might need to inverse y or you might need to do the square root of y. So let's start with the square root, for example. So here is the square root. This is the most popular for, uh, for, for uh, fixing or overcoming the normality assumption, uh, the heteroscedasticity assumption. So with heteroscedasticity also, Usually, heteroscedasticity is resolved by replacing the, in, the dependent variable y by logarithm of y or square root of y. So let's try both of them. So let's make an, a, a, here data transformation ln. And over here, let's take data a transformation a transformation uh, uh, square root. Okay? So let's take the len over here and see if it's a good solution. Okay, len is natural logarithm. So I'm gonna change my mind and put the len here. Okay, and now let's run the analysis. Here's data analysis, this is digression. For the y, you know it. We are gonna take the transformed. So we're gonna take the transformed form and for the x, we're gonna take the usual. And don't forget to take the labels. This time we need the residuals and let's put the output somewhere that we can see clearly over here. And let's hit enter or okay and take a look. Over here, we can see the adjusted R square is awesome, 0 0.6. This means that income also explains about 65.9% of the variance in the food spending, which is similar, almost similar to what we found here, 64.5. 65 here, right? Here's the adjusted is 64.5. Here is even better, Six, slightly. All right, over here, everything is all right, right? So let's start with the uh, um, the normality assumption. I wonder if I can just pull these <laughs> very quickly. Maybe right there. And let's take a look at this. Oh, now we find out that this is 0.3. Uh, it is okay for the skewness, I think. Oh no, it's not okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay for the skewness. How about for the crypto? Okay for the kurtosis. So normality assumption is not, not valid, not violated. 
store normality assumption of the error term is not vi is not violated. Okay. Next. Next is the heteroskedasticity. With heteroskedasticity, I, I, I would like to keep some more space, right? So over here, I'm going to take the, as usual, as I do usually, I like the, to do it visually and also to do it here. Absolute uh, residuals, right? And I'm going to take the absolute residual over here and run it. And then I'm going to take also for later, now you know the norm, the squared residuals. Right, guys? So I'm going to put here, oh, no, no, no. No, 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 what happened to you? And over here, I'm going to put square. Uh, no, 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 not square. We're going to have to just multiply, right? And now we are ready to rock and roll. So let's start. First of all, insert here. First of all, let's select, make the selection of the range of data that we would like to plot. And then we can take a look heteroskedasticity seems not to be present because these are like um, there is I can't see a trend line really <laughs> and even if I do it is really flat super flat all right let's do the push and pegan pegan test just for fun push and pegan test is basically the test for uh, the check of heteroskedasticity we're, we're going to take y to be the squared residuals and we're going to take x to be of course the x already the x and now we're going to put the output somewhere nice under the visualization we're going to say okay and now we're going to compute the chi square statistic and that would be the this one, the R square, which is so low, times the uh, sorry, the observations, the number of observa observations, and then the p value would be what chi uh, square distribution RT, and that would be here. And what happened now? Ah, we need the degrees of freedom, so here's one degree of freedom. Anyway. So over here, we are going to reject the null hypothesis meaning we accept the fact that there is no heteroscedasticity, no hate. So no heteroscedasticity. Basically, there is, uh, uh, home, uh, for, this, for this model, when we transformed it, there's no heteroscedasticity. Before transformation, there was heteroscedasticity. So the logarithmic transformation was really successful. The logarithmic, trans this is logarithmic, yes, this natural logarithmic transformation is very successful, guys in getting rid of heteroskedasticity and also in terms of the violation of the error term it will also resolve hopefully resolve the problem let's try another part or another type of transformation let's try the square root transformation how about that guys how about that let's do it let's do it let's investigate how this transformation will affect the results so we're going to add here the square root And here we go. Now let's uh, produce the data and see if everything is all right. This is the y. This is the x. Okay, these are the labels. Here are the output. Let's put the output somewhere that we can see. Let's take a look. The adjusted r square is good. This is good. This is significant. Yes. Although, let's take a look now at the other assumptions. Here, I like to put the absolute error, the absolute residuals, right, guys? And then let's also once and for all take the squared residuals, right, guys? So here, square. And uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. We just multiply it by itself to square it. Now let's get started. 
we are going to uh, take this cunis and the kurtosis. So for normality assumption, first and foremost is the normality assumption. So I'm going to take these guys and throw them in there and the check. Seems like the skewness and the kurtosis can pass. Let's take a closer look. For 50 to 60, it's between 0 0.9 and 1. 0 0.6 and 0 0.6, it is fine. So there is no problem with the normality assumption. So the normality assumption has been validated, okay? It's not violated. Now let's take a look at heteroskedasticity check. Homoskedasticity assumption, heteroskedasticity, a check. Basically, we're going to take these two guys together, visually, inset, and here is the plot. Now, looking at this plot, we start from 70. Now we're fine, right? And then I believe there's no heteroskedasticity. I don't I I it's a little flattened, but not as much as the logarithmic. So nah, let's push and pig and test. I even don't know I don't think that there's an E at the end, right? Anyway, um uh, let's let's get started. Data uh, analysis regression. Y is the square uh, the residuals. X is X is income. X is income. And now the output, lovelies, is over here. You just put the output here. And no need for residuals. And hit OK. And now you are going to compute all these guys, which is the chi square and the p value. Let's take a look. Indeed, I want this one multiplied by the R-square. So this is the, the value, and this value will be this over and this together. And that will be... Hmm, it is less than or equal 0 0.05. So there is heteroiskidasi. DCT. So there is heteroskedasticity. So this kind of transformation was not successful in this case. In this case, the square root transformation was not successful. However, the natural logarithm transformation was successful. Do you want to try another transformation just for fun, even though we don't usually use it for heteroskedasticity? So let's do a data, a transform, and that would be the last one. Transform 1 over uh, in invert, the inverted, which is 1 over. Let's do that just for fun. Just for what? For fun. Because this kind of transformation is also used for uh, the normality assumption when it's violated. So over here, I would like to take 1 over 1 over the y. Oh, man. It's so painful, isn't it? Yeah, it's painful. 1 over y in this case is kind of painful because it is a very big number. 1 over y is probably good for smaller values, I would say. Hmm, I think so, I think so. It's gonna also look ugly in the transformation, in the in the in the interpretation. Right guys? In the interpretation of the um yeah, it's gonna look ugly. I don't know why I'm wasting my time and yours, but let's just you don't do anything, just to watch and let's see what happens guys, okay? So let's take a look. Uh I didn't put the residuals though. Hmm, that's very bad. do it again data and okay hopefully everything is in place right d right good and then i just need the residuals this time so i'm gonna put it here you put it here and then hit okay all right let's take a look if is there a heteroskedasticity or not and here the abs oh residuals I'm 
doing now? I am losing focus, don't I? I am. Uh -huh. Something happened to my Excel. gonna look ugly okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just jump into the Prussian pagan test right and then do the normality assumption uh, so let me just go to data and regression and just I wanna I, I am very curious really about the Prussian pagan test if there if we got rid of the um, of the het heteroscedasticity here and then I don't want residuals for this test, and I want the output to be somewhere maybe here. Right? And hit OK. And let me do the Prussian Pagan test. Hopefully I can just copy these and see what happens. It's going to be the R square multiplied by these, and this would be this, and the degrees of freedom is 1. And as you can see here, there is heteroskedasticity. So there is heteroskedasticity. So not all forms, because this is less than or equal to 0 0.05. So we accept, we reject the null hypothesis of no heteroskedasticity. So there is no heteroscedasticity. There is uh, there is heteroscedasticity because we reject the fact that there is no heteroscedasticity. So we reject the fact that there is heteroscedasticity. So since we are saying that there is heteroscedasticity, this means, and you can see now very clearly, that the inverse transformation, the square root transformation, were not successful in getting rid of heteroscedasticity. However, the natural logarithm was able to get us uh, to get rid of heteroscedasticity. Same applies. Actually, the invert is not very popular to getting rid of in, uh, of heteroscedasticity, but it could be helpful in getting rid of uh, the non-normality assumption. So, what did we learn in this video? We learned in this video how to transform the dependent variable so that we can overcome the vi some violations in the assumptions. The first violation in the assumption could be the, the violation of the normality assumption. If you have a violation of the normality assumption, you try the logarithm transformation, the square root transformation, and the 1 over y transformation. If you have a violation in the heteroscedasticity, you, the most popular ones are uh, the uh, natural logarithm and the square root. As you can see also today, we've learned that not all transformations render desired results. In this case, as you can see, natural logarithm transformation was able to help us overcome the, uh, uh, the heteroscedasticity. However, the square root and the invert uh, of, the, of the value of y were not able, were not useful in, in, in this context. But in other examples, you might find the square root to be very helpful in getting rid of the uh, heteroscedasticity assumption. But of course, at all times, you also need to start with the normality check, right? So if the normality check is violated already, even before you get into the heteroscedasticity, maybe this is the case in here. I didn't even check the normality assumption. So if you check, for example, the normality assumption, you might find out even before getting into the heteroscedasticity, that the normality assumption is already violated, then no need to even to proceed. So let's take a look just for fun. Uh, here's the residuals and this is the residuals. And let's take a closer look here. Maybe it is violated, maybe not. We have 50 to 60. As you can see, it is not violated for kurtosis. And over here, it is vi violated for skewness. So even the normality assumption was violated. So it's good that I was a little patient to show you that even the normality, the normality assumption 
is violated. So if the normality assumption is already violated, game over. We don't have to proceed to here. But it's good to show you that with some transformations, maybe even the normality assumption will be violated. It will, it, it will be a disaster. Some, uh, you need to take it to your common sense. As you can see here, when you have very big values and then you take the invert, the, in, the inverse sorry, of them, one over the y, you can see how the values became so small and it's just disordered the whole thing. So it's not really what we're looking for. Over here, let's take a look at this transformation that was not successful. Uh, this uh, one, two, three, four digits has become one, two digits. Uh, a little bit, not very far away from the, yeah, it is maybe, um, yeah, we can see that it is it is very close, close enough, but it still, it, 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 it gave us not very desired results for, results for getting rid of heteroscedasticity. Over here, the, as you can see, the uh, uh, logarithm, the natural logarithm, even though all the values were about nine and eight for the natural logarithm, do you see that? Do you guys see that? All the values are between 9 and 8 here, as you can see. Uh, they are very close, right? But at, at the same time, they preserve their meaning uh, because all of them were transformed the same way. And we were able to get rid of heteroiscidasticity. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, I will explain this in class on Tuesday. However, I thought I will just record myself to make sure that if you have any internet disconnection or anything that you still have this video to study on your own at home if you are a little bit uh, uh, disconnected in during a class time. Uh, take care of yourself. Enjoy the weekend.